What's up everyone? My name is Andrew. I'm a youth pastor in the region and I have a word for you guys today. Our passage for today comes from 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. We love because He first loved us. And the message I want to give you guys is a short message about love, and specifically about the love of God. Now this passage tells us that God loves us first. The word first doesn't mean second and doesn't mean third, it means first. It means prior. It means before. It means before you did anything. It means before you earned anything or deserved anything. It means before you did anything good or before you even heard about God. Many of us live our lives as if God loves us second. Second to what, you might be asking? Second to our love. That if we love Him, then He'll love us back. If, if we do something for Him, if we earn something in His eyes, if we earn His favor, then maybe He will love us back. I remember a while back when I was in high school, one of my friends, after this big exam, he gets this grade back from the teacher that's, let's just say, failing. And, and he got this grade and he looks at it and he tells me, Andrew, I'm so afraid to go home. And I said, why? And he said, I'm so afraid to go home because I'm afraid what my dad will say. I'm afraid of that look of disappointment that will be on his face. And then he says something that really broke my heart. He said, I'm afraid that when he sees this, he's not going to love me. Isn't this how many of us see God? Isn't this how many of us go to church and approach God in the Bible, approach Him in prayer? Isn't this what, why we can't go to church? Why we're so afraid to get right with God because we're afraid that after what we've done, He just can't love me anymore. I used to live my life like this for many years. I used to live like I had something to prove, like there was something for me to earn, like there was something for me to deserve. And even as a pastor, even as someone who's supposed to lead the church, I lived like this. When I would preach a great sermon, I thought God was with me. When I would preach a bad sermon, I thought He had rejected me. When I, when I did something that, that got a lot of people's approval and favor, I thought God was near to me. But when I thought, that I had failed in the eyes of people. I thought I had failed in the eyes of God. And so I lived every day with deep anxiety and, and, and as if, if I didn't do enough today, then I would have to end my day with disappointment from God. But the Bible tells us another story about God. In Luke chapter 15, it shows us another image of a different kind of father. And in this story, there's a son and he takes his father's money and he says, Dad, I don't want to live in your house anymore. And he goes far away. And he spends his dad's money on wild living, on, on, on drinking. And, and, and when he has nothing left, he starts eating with the pigs and begging for money. And at this point, he says, oh my goodness, I have to go back to my father. And so what, you know what he does? He does what many of us do when we've disappointed our parents. He starts preparing a speech in his mind. He says, this is what I'm going to say. I, 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 know, I know obviously my dad will, will never accept me as his son again. So I'm going to beg that I could be one of his servants because even his servants live better than I'm living. He's preparing this speech and he's, and he's walking to his father's house. He's walking. He's so ashamed. He has his head down. He goes through his, his, the gates of his house and, and he's walking down this field to get to his dad's house. When all along his dad is watching from across the field through the window and he sees his son broken and dirty and he sees him walking and, and before he could even get to the house, the dad runs out to him. The dad runs and runs in front of all of his servants and he goes and he grabs his son and the son tries to get the speech out. He tries to say, dad, listen to me. You know, I don't deserve your love. He tries to say, I don't deserve to be your son anymore. But the father doesn't even let him finish. The father is too busy hugging him, saying, I'm so happy that you're home. I'm so happy that my son is back. Go prepare a feast. Go, go prepare some steak. Go, 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 do, go do everything to get ready for my son to be home again. Let me give you another image of a father. I remember back in the day, when I was a little kid in elementary school, I would, I would go out, outside my house with my backpack and, and with all my, my books and with, with my papers for school and for class. 
And I remember as I was getting ready to leave and get on the bus to go to school, my dad rushed out and he hugged me. And you know what he would tell me? He says, son, I'm so proud of you. And as a little kid, I didn't understand. I was like, why, why are you proud of me? <laughs> I didn't do anything. I said, I didn't even take a test any, or anything yet. I, I, I don't have perfect grades. I didn't win the soccer game yet. I didn't do anything. I didn't even go to school yet. Why are you proud of me? And you know what my dad said? Because you're my son. And he said, that's the only reason I'll ever need. Man, so many of us, we live our lives, we go to school, we go to work, we live, we live our days being so afraid that we will fail. We're so, so anxious that we're going to mess up and somehow we're going to lose God's love for us. But what if all along, before your day even began, before you even had a chance to be good or to be bad, before you, you got that A or you got that F, before you got that raise at work, before you got that promotion, what if I could tell you that your father loved you first? Your father didn't need anything to love you. And the reason why so many of us, we have such a hard time believing this, is because we have been taught by this world that if you don't deserve it, that you don't get it. But that is not how the gospel works. I remember a long time ago when a youth student came up to me, and after a message that I had given on the grace of God, she came to me just crying. She came to me weeping, and she said, I'm so ashamed of everything I've done. And, and, and she didn't share everything that she had done, and I didn't want her to. But she said, if everyone at this church knew what I had done, no one here would love me. And you know what she said? I'm so afraid, Pastor Andrew, because I want to go to God. But if I confess to him everything I ever did, he wouldn't be able to love me. And in my mind, I'm like, man, what happened to this girl to make her believe that God wouldn't love her? And as lovingly as I could as a pastor, you know what I said? I looked at her and with love in my eyes, I said, do you think that you deserve God's love before? You messed up? And you know what she said? Well, no, I, I guess I didn't because he's God and you know, I'm a person. And I said, oh, so do you think that when you were born, you deserved God's love? And she said, no, I, I, I guess not. And, and I said, well, but what if you didn't sin at all? You know, you, you, you didn't mess up once since you were born. Do you think that you would deserve God's love? And she said, well, no, I know what the Bible says. And I said that, do you think that after what you did, you deserve God's love any less? And then she said, no, I don't think I do. And with all the love in my heart, I said that you have never deserved God's love. And you know what I said? I said, you know what the gospel is? You will never have to deserve the love of God. You will never have to earn it. You will never have to deserve it. Do you know why? Because he loved you first. And when I say he loves you first, it doesn't mean he loves you second. It doesn't mean he loves you third. It doesn't mean he loves you because you were good enough. It doesn't mean he loves you because you read the Bible. It doesn't mean he loves you because you prayed today. It doesn't mean he loves you because you've gone to church all your life and he doesn't love those people who don't go to church. It means he loved you first before you even knew his name. It means Romans chapter 5 verse 8, while you were in sin, Christ died for you. And this is what it means when it says he loved you first. It means before you even go out the door in the morning, God stops you, hugs you, and says, you're my daughter and you're my son, and I'm so proud of you. And so many of you are probably thinking, but don't we have to go to church and don't we have to read the Bible and don't we have to pray? Don't we have to love others? Of course, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this. You don't have to do any of those things to get God's love for you. But we do all of those things because God loved us first. And so for you today, if you are broken, if you are tired, if you're doing well or if you're doing bad, if you've been close to God or if you've been far from God, I want to tell you some good news. 
God loves you first. So today, stop before you do anything. Receive that love. Say, God, thank you for loving me. And go outside your door, get on the bus, go to school, go to work, go into your life, knowing that you are loved by God.